Well, some years are just going to be better than others. That's the way it is. And 2015 for the WWE was a bad year. A very, very bad year. You know it. It's okay to admit it, even if you don't want to. You have to be honest with yourself. Again, some years are just going to be better than others. And this year was just brutally, brutally bad. I mean, it's hard for me to remember a point in time where I was less interested in the WWE and consequently as a result, the wrestling industry as a whole than I am at this particular moment. And that in part has to do with my lack of interest of any other wrestling company for sure. And it in part has to do with just the state and identity or lack thereof of the professional wrestling industry as a whole in the U.S. today. But at the end of the day, the WWE is still the straw that stirs the drink when it comes to wrestling in this country. And this shit was just bad this year. I mean, you know, usually even if you think a year was bad, you say this was the worst year ever. You still can look back throughout the year and you're like, man, there's a ton of memorable moments. There were a lot of great matches that happened, a lot of crazy things that happened. So there's a lot of stupidity and a lot of crap. You didn't even have a lot of that this year. Now, sure, I'll be doing a video soon talking about the 10 most memorable moments of WWE in 2015. But I can tell you this much. It took me a long time to compile the list. And I don't even think the list is that particularly good. And in a lot of ways, that's indicative of how bad the product was this year. I struggled to come up with 10 things that were actually really memorable about the WWE. And some of them aren't even good things. It's just bad. I don't really see where any new stars were created. I can't recall one incredibly compelling storyline the entire year. I don't remember a lot of really, really good matches. I mean, even when you would get something really good to happen, such as Seth Rollins as the Money in the Bank winner, cashing in at WrestleMania 31, doing something that I said needed to happen, I thought should happen, and they went with it. And it worked for that moment in time. It was the perfect decision for them. You know, they got to the point where Seth Rollins became too much and most certainly not in a good way. They made Seth Rollins a long-reigning, boring-ass, cookie-cutter, bullshit, chicken-shit, heel world champion. They gave him all the Randy Orton force and push while his character was trying to display some edge-like tendencies. And it just didn't work. You know, John Cena wasn't even a main event player in 2015. And this guy was primarily in the mid-card, upper mid-card, most of the year, revolving around the U.S. title. And it still didn't help. You had The Undertaker wrestle four pay-per-view matches this year. Four of them. Four of them. And it still didn't help. Brock Lesnar wrestled in some big matches in some big spots this year. The main event of WrestleMania 31 against Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, The Undertaker, The Undertaker again, and it still didn't help. It was just bad. That's the best way I could describe it. But the question is, how bad was 2015 for the WWE? Was it the worst year ever for the WWE product during our lifetime? And I know sometimes we can get short-term memories and we can be very reactionary, very reflexy as a fan base in terms of the way we view things. And we can tend to kind of either look at things from one or two standpoints, either A, nothing that's done in the present could ever measure up in the past, which is most certainly more the camp that I will fall into, if anything, that's what I kind of default to. Or you get the other camps sometimes where since it's going on now, you don't remember anything else that happened before. This is the greatest shit ever, and it's only going to get greater and greater and greater and greater. 
And I most certainly don't fall into that camp. Some of you do, but a lot of you probably fall into the camp of me. But I can't sit there and say this was the worst year ever for the WWE product. I've been, I've been watching it for three decades now. I, I say that all the time. And I continue to want to age myself on here. But it is one of the worst years for the WWE product that I've ever seen. And I think there was a lack of new stars, a lack of interesting, compelling characters, a lack of interesting, and compelling storylines. A lack of really, really memorable quality of matches and, frankly, really quality, memorable moments. You know, if anything else, if I'm going to be sitting there and expected to watch three hours of Raw every week and a pay-per-view once a month, because I don't watch the other crap now, you know, the least that this company could do is make Raw better and make the pay-per-views better. And they just don't. They just don't. But I think we've got to pump the brakes here just a little bit for those that are saying this is the worst that it's ever been. Some of the people, in my opinion, that say that don't even remember when it was even worse than it was right now. Some of them maybe choose to forget how bad it used to be. Now, 2015 has been bad. Because, like I said, you had Daniel Bryan had to walk away again with another neck injury. Who knows if and when he'll ever wrestle again. You got a lot of you who you wanted to be the world champion. That was Seth Rollins, and he ended up boring the brakes off of most of you. Dean Ambrose kind of blows in the breeze. Yes, maybe you get a memorable moment for Kevin Owens beating John Cena in his first uh, pay-per-view match, but then immediately Cena goes over him multiple times in a dominant fashion, and then you're kind of left blowing in the breeze with Kevin Owens and his character. Dean Ambrose is kind of blowing in the breeze. The Wyatt family is blowing in the breeze. Yes, you had Undertaker come back and work four pay-per-view matches in 2015, but one of them against was at WrestleMania against Bray Wyatt. Then you got two matches against Brock Lesnar, and then another one in a tag match against members of the Wyatt family. Not exactly a banner way to ultimately utilize the Undertaker, especially if he's going to work four matches during the course of the year. But again, when I think about it, this is not the worst year. It's one of the worst for my money. I still think 2010 was worse because we have to remember that's going off of the backdrop of the potential of that Nexus faction and the interest and intrigue that that created and then what they ultimately did with it, which was just serve up everybody basically to John Cena. They became John, Cena, John Cena's jobber bitch faction. John Felix Anthony Cena is going to get his LOL Cena wins hashtag breakfast club rules bitches always have and always will. But you know, it got so bad to the point in 2015 where even with Triple H and Stephanie, they didn't even utilize them consistently. And when they did, they didn't utilize them very well. But it's most certainly better than what they did in 2010 when they started having these stupid-ass fucking stand-up for WWE veiled political ads that many idiots actually bought into. They stand up for WWE. Can you not fucking see this is directly correlated to, there goes the pencil, Linda's Senate campaign. I mean, do we remember how bad it was the second half of 2010, especially as that election drew closer, that election drew near, and the reality sunk in that Linda running in a blue state as a moderate Republican was not going to win. I mean, you finally would get Vince on TV, but it's some stupid ass thing where he's got Linda bumper stickers all over him and he's got a Blumenthal one on his ass. And that was 2010 in a nutshell. It was just bad. Remember the WrestleMania that year wasn't very good. I mean, the SummerSlam had an incredibly stupid finish. You know, you ended up having Wade Barrett be buried, literally and figuratively, under a pile of chairs by John Cena at TLC. That year, to me, was worse. Because, at that point in time, it was all about Linda Senate campaign and pounding John Cena down your fucking throats. So as bad as 2015 was... I'll still take that over the second half of 2010 because the second half of 2010 ended up being so bad that it made that entire year suck, in my opinion. But then I think back to other years gone by. 1993 and 95 were two shining examples of really, really bad times with the product. I mean, 93 and 95 were just terrible. 
they were bad. I mean, in 95, the top guys were Diesel and Bret Hart. It was just not a good time. You had spark plug Bob Holly and the one, two, three kid and, you know, the Portuguese man of war, Aldo Montoya. Oh, poor just incredible. No wonder you wanted to work at Aldo. Um, but man, 1995, Mabel was the king of the ring. I mean, holy Christ. 1993. Crush was getting a big push. Oh, my God. You had a, a big-time pay-per-view match at a Survivor Series revolve around the four doinks. And I love doink, but we didn't need four of them. Oh, God. When I think back, I think back on 93. And even when you look at 93, what do you really remember that was good? We often refer to WrestleMania 9 as being the worst WrestleMania of all time. That Royal Rumble wasn't very good, even though Yokozuna won. SummerSlam was stupid. And the Survivor Series most certainly wasn't any good. The four big pay-per-views all largely stunk in 1993, and you could make the similar argument in 95 as well. You really could. I was sure people get caught up in 95 in the Royal Rumble because Shawn Michaels won and this and that. But he didn't even fucking main event WrestleMania. He took a backseat to LT versus Bam Bam Bigelow, for God's sakes. LT and Bam Bam Bigelow. I'm just saying. So for those of you that think this was the absolute worst year in the history of the WWE product, I say you're wrong. It was bad. It was brutally bad. But I will take Roman Reigns in the main event scene over Mabel winning King of the Ring. No offense. Rest your soul, Mr. Frazier. But the truth is what the truth is. Diesel was boring as shit as a fucking world champion. That's why Vince didn't even build WrestleMania around him defending the title being the main event. And then 1993, what the hell do you actually remember from 1993? That was any goddamn good whatsoever. Hogan ended up leaving midway through the year. Warrior was nowhere to be found. Andre had passed away. I mean, Jake was gone. You know, a lot of these guys were gone. Flair was gone by the early portion of that year. That was a terrible, terrible, god-awful year. And again, much worse to me than 2015 was. I'll take this year over 2010. Because at least I don't have to sit there and see all this crap that is nothing more than another excuse to try and do some political ad shit to try and get Linda elected to the Senate. When you get to the point where a Senate campaign is more important than your core nuts and bolts business, that's a problem. I'll always hate 2010 more. And thinking back on it as a kid, years like 93 and 95 are the type of years that almost drove me away from professional wrestling entirely as a teenager. Now, yes, this year has been bad, and it's damn near drove me away from the business, but there's still been enough there and enough redeeming qualities for me to say it hasn't been total shit throughout. It's just largely sucked. But the worst year of WWE ever? Mm. I don't know about all that. I suggest y'all pump the brakes on it just a little bit. Let's hope 2016 is at least a little bit better.